Almost every book, at least every good book, has a purpose within its pages. There is a reason that the author wrote the book, and there is a reason why the book might resonate with us. Typically, that reason is going to be something that will stick with us even after we have closed the book down. That doesn't mean that every single book has to have some sort of moral lesson or something like that in it, but it should have something within it that we can take away that can help us to either change our perspective on certain topics or alter the way that we view the world. Whatever the case may be, there should be something within the story that resonates with us long after we've already put the book back on the shelf. Stories with something that I can pull out and that will stick with me for a long time, even after I have already concluded the story and have moved on to something else. But today, I'm not gonna be talking about the ones that are great. I'm not gonna be talking about the lessons I pull away from stories that are fantastic. I do already have a video out about the lessons that I've learned from stories, if you wanna click on the thingy up there. But today, I'm gonna be talking about preachy writing. Stories where there is an attempt at a lesson or an attempt at giving the reader something to pull away from the story, but the way that it's handled really just lends itself to making the story forgettable or even eye-roll worthy. This is something commonly referred to as preachy writing. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what preachy writing is, why it's bad, and then at the end of it, I'm gonna tell you exactly how easy it is to just not have preachy writing in a book, which just makes preachy writing even more frustrating. First of all, there are of course exceptions to what I'm gonna talk about in this video. There is preachy writing that is actually good. There's preachy writing that is done well. I think that the most common exception is going to be when it is played for comedic effect. Discworld is a great example of that. Terry Pratchett quite often talks directly to the reader and gives the reader his two cents, and it's often done for comedic effect, or it is at least done in a way that doesn't feel like it's being heavy-handed or like we are expected to walk away from this book thinking exactly like he does. And there are of course other examples, not just in comedic works. Heavy-handed delivery just doesn't really have much of an impact. If I feel like I'm being preached to by the author, I'm just going to kind of shut down at that point. I'm not going to take in what it is that they have to say, and it's not gonna stick with me even if I do end up agreeing with what the author believes because I didn't come to the conclusion on my own. The conclusion was handed to me on a silver platter. Maybe the author took time to address me directly in the story to tell me, hey, this is what what this means. All of these things that have happened, this is what it means. This is what I'm trying to get across. Honestly, at that point, it feels like any sort of subtlety or symbolism that you've had throughout the book is just thrown out the window in exchange for you just telling me what it is that you want me to know. On top of that, it kind of feels a bit fanficy. Fanficy is just a term that's generally used to describe writing that feels like it belongs more in fan fiction than an actual published novel. And heavy-handed morals, I think, really fall under that because when you are just ham-fisting the morals and you are trying to shove them down the reader's throat, it just feels like you have no grasp of nuance or subtlety. Again, if it's played for comedic effect in that regard, then yeah, it's kind of hilarious. But many times when I've seen this, it hasn't been comedic, it's just been really cringeworthy. Even if I agree with what it is that the author is trying to say, even if I fully agree with the message 100%, if the author is trying to shove that message down my throat, I'm going to resist it and I don't want to have anything to do with it. They may even end up changing my mind for the opposite just because I'm sitting here thinking, I don't really want to be associated with somebody who acts like this. A theme that is more as subtle and nuanced and slow moving has a much greater chance of being grasped and of catching my attention. It also has a much greater chance of just sticking with me. A great example of this is Ender's Game. I've said this a million times, I know that Orson Scott Card is a problematic author, but I'm talking specifically about the book. The book Ender's Game has an excellent moral to it. It actually has several that you can pull away from it. I think that most of all, you can pull away the lesson of empathy. We see that not just on the grand scale of the genocide that is committed in the book, but also just on the smaller scale with Ender handling things like his bully. Learning empathy is a very key element of the story. But if the book suddenly turned into Orson Scott Card sitting there and trying to teach me directly about empathy, I would not retain anything from Ender's Game. And it would definitely not be a book that I have highly rated or recommended to people because it wouldn't have stuck with me the same way. I would have just remembered that part where Orson Scott Card really ham-fisted his morals as opposed to just letting me try to figure them out and get my own interpretation based on the events that are taking place in Ender's Game. Having more subtlety and nuance means that I have to discover your moral or your lesson or whatever perspective it is that you want me to glean from the story as opposed to you just telling me what to think. And if I have to work for it, if I have to work to pull that lesson out of your story, I'm a lot more likely to retain it. Another problem with having preachy writing is that you really risk alienating your readers. When you sit there and tell them exactly what moral it is that you want them to pull away from the story, they may disagree with it, they may shut the book, they may tell people not to pick up this book. You risk reaching a smaller audience as a result of your preachiness, when you could have the exact same lesson and morals in your book, but you could do it more subtly. And if you do it more subtly, there are a couple of things that can happen here that can prevent alienating 
misleading your readers. One of them, the reader may not even pick up on what the moral or lesson is, in which case, if there's somebody who would disagree with it, it's perfectly fine. They didn't even notice. Another great result of having a more subtle and nuanced lesson in your story is that it's up to the own reader's interpretation. So you don't even risk alienating readers who are not aligned with what you think because they may pull a different lesson or moral or perspective away from your book and enjoy it just the same. They may tell other people that they want them to read it so they can discuss it. Authors could open up all sorts of avenues for conversation if they would just not shove the morals and their lessons down the throats of their readers. So if you don't want to alienate your readers, don't just spell out the lesson that you have in your book. Be subtle. Subtlety is really going to be the name of the game for this video and for not being preachy. Just be subtle instead of extremely direct. So that's what preachy writing is. That's why I think that it's bad. It risks alienating your readers and it also risks making your story risks. Why is risks so hard to say? And it also risks having your story's lesson boil down to just one key thing that you thought of, whereas readers could probably pull all sorts of other things from your story that you didn't even consider. Maybe you don't agree with everything they're gonna pull from it, but that's one of the beauties of having a story and of discussing a story with other people. So preachy writing just limits the story so much more than the author may think that it does. All right, and now I'm gonna talk about the one really easy way that you can go ahead and just fix having preachy writing. Seriously, it's incredibly simple, but before I get to that, I wanted to let you know that you can like, comment, and subscribe Subscribe, all of which cost you nothing and make me happy, kind of. I mean, they help, so. Well, there are many ways that you could fix preachy writing, but I find that there is one way that is extremely easy and very simple. Don't draw the conclusion. You can do everything else. You can have your characters talk about these things, but don't draw the conclusion. Just don't write the conclusion of whatever your moral idea or perspective or lesson is. Don't write it out. Let the reader piece it all together. Let the reader figure out what that conclusion is. Not spelling out the ending and the morals of your story is going to be the difference between having your story be Breaking Bad and having it be Veggie Tales. That's honestly the simplest way that I can think of it. You could do everything leading up to the conclusion, but then just don't write the conclusion. Let the reader come to that conclusion. Not only will this help the reader retain the information, but it's also going to help promote discussion about your book and about the topics within because people may come to differing conclusions and they may want to talk about them with other people. Seriously, just don't write the conclusion. Let them figure it out. Let people talk about what the conclusion might be. Just don't write at the end, this is what my story meant. Seriously, that easy. Just don't do that. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, this has been a really quick video about preachy writing. Honestly, there wasn't a specific story that kind of came to mind when I was writing this. Nothing in particular prompted me to write this. I've just noticed it a few times in recent memory and I wanted to bring it up because I really enjoy stories that I can pull something away from. And I just really hate it when I'm enjoying a story and I think that I'm approaching a great lesson and then that lesson is just shoved down my throat by the author who says, this is the one thing you need to take away from my book. That's very frustrating for me. I don't want to be told what to think. I'm too rebellious for that. Thank you very much for taking the time to check out this video. If you would like to see another one from me, you can do so by clicking up here. And until next time, bye.